Hello, I'm JW. This is part of a series on wiring of heating systems, and this time we're going to look at S-plan heating. And this is one where you have two separate valves, one valve for the hot water and one for the central heating. It's probably the most common system that's fitted today, and it's one that can easily be extended, so if you want an extra heating zone, then it's simply a question of adding an extra valve and a thermostat for that. And you can actually add as many valves as you want, so if you want to say six heating zones, then simply imagine having six valves and six thermostats to control them. And that's probably why it's the most likely option today, as the uh, other types of system are less flexible in that regard. Now, after all the items have been installed in the appropriate places, all of the cables from those are taken back to a single point and connected into what's normally called a wiring centre. In reality, this is just a plastic box with a row of screw terminals inside, and uh, obviously that's all the wires just connect to those. And usually they have a selection of cable entries around the sides and some means of securing the cables, as in this example here from Honeywell. And this particular one has 10 terminals, which is uh, more than plenty for the S-Plan wiring system. And you can get these from various manufacturers, they're all very similar. Some have more terminals in than others for different types of system, but uh, ultimately it's just a box with a set of terminal strips inside. So we'll start off then with the uh, set of 10 terminals there, and put those in the centre. And we'll number those from 1 to 10, and uh, note that uh, each one is just a single terminal. They normally have two screws, so you can put cables in from the top or the bottom. But uh, electrically, of course, there's only 10 individual terminals. Now, the first thing, of course, you're going to need is some kind of power supply, and that generally comes from a 3-amp fuse spur. And we'll connect those wires into the terminal strip there on numbers 1, 2, and 3. So we've got the line, neutral, and earth coming in. And the second thing we'll attach is the boiler, and this requires a permanent power supply, so of course we'll just connect the line, neutral and earth to the terminals 1, 2 and 3 in there. And of course to turn the thing on and off it needs an additional connection, which is normally labelled SL for switched line. And in this case we'll just put a single wire from there and connect that to terminal 10 in the wiring centre, and we'll also connect other things to that later on. Now the third item is the pump. And on modern systems, this normally connects in directly to the boiler itself. So, of course, that needs the earth and neutral connections. And the line, or live, to the pump goes to the PL terminal in the boiler. And this is so that the boiler can turn the pump on and off as required. Normally that's done so that the pump can run on after the boiler has actually turned off to get rid of any heat remaining inside there. There are a couple of other ways of attaching the pump, and we'll look at those at the end of the video. Now, as it stands there, we've just got the boiler pump and the power. So, of course, we need some method to turn these things on and off. And the programmer is basically just a timer in a box. And uh, for an S-Plan system, it will have two channels, one for the hot water and, of course, one for the central heating. And the programmer, like the other items, requires a permanent power supply. So I've got the line and neutral there, and those go back to terminals 1 and 2 in the wiring centre. Don't normally need an earth for the programmer, although it's usually the case that you would run an earth wire to that but they're generally plastic, so there's no actual connection to that. And the other connections here are what comes from terminals 3 and 4 in the programmer, which is what determines whether the hot water or heating is selected. And uh, we'll, then we'll just put wires from those to terminals 4 and 6 in the wiring centre, just ready to connect those to other things later on. Now we'll have a look at the hot water first of all, and in order to ensure that we only heat the water to the temperatures that we want, it will need a cylinder thermostat. This is essentially just a switch, and when the switch is closed, uh, hot water is therefore required. When it heats up to the desired temperature, the switch opens. Now, most cylinder thermostats have three terminals, but in the S-Plan system, only two terminals are required. It's simply an on and off type of connection. And the cylinder thermostat connects to the wiring centres on terminals 6 and 8 there. And notice that number 6 is the one that actually comes from the programmer to turn on the hot water when required. Now the second item for hot water is the actual valve, which opens to allow hot water to flow to the hot water cylinder. And uh, this has five connections, and on the left there you can see you've got the three connections of line, neutral and earth, just as with all the other devices. And that provides permanent power to the valve, but notice that inside the valve the line does not go to the actual motor, it just goes to a switch inside, and that switch uh, basically closes when the valve has opened fully. And that sends the line out on the orange wire there to terminal number 10. And that's actually what turns on the boiler and the pump. And the other connection to the hot water valve is the brown wire there, which goes to terminal 8. And that connects to the motor. So when power is applied there, the motor turns on, the valve opens, and when it's fully open, the switch closes. And that sends the signal to the boiler to actually switch on. 
Now the sequence of operation is that uh, first of all the programmer needs to actually turn on and therefore send out the line on terminal number three. I see that's highlighted in brown there. And of course that goes to terminal six in the wiring centre, so of course that also means that the wire to the cylinder thermostat is live as well. Now at this state the uh, thermostat is actually open, so nothing will happen. And this is typical of when the hot water cylinder is actually already hot, so you don't actually need to turn the boiler on to heat it. But uh, if the water in there cools, or obviously is used, then the switch will close, and that will send the line through to terminal eight. Now terminal eight is also the one that connects to the hot water valve, so in this state the valve motor will switch on and open the valve, and of course that will allow water to flow through it. Now I'm just showing highlighted in red there the actual circuit that's been completed. So from the programmer via terminal three that goes to the wiring center, and from there to the cylinder thermostat, and through the thermostat to terminal eight, and then to the hot water valve so that can be opened. And if the water heats up to the desired temperature, then the thermostat will open and of course break the circuit. And again, if the timer in the programmer switches off, then that will disconnect the power as well. Now once the motor has actually opened the valve fully, which normally takes several seconds, the switch inside the valve will close, and this will connect the incoming permanent line there to the outgoing orange wire, which goes to terminal 10. And of course, as this is connected to the boiler, that also means that the boiler SL terminal is connected to line, and this will turn on the boiler and of course heat the water as required. And note that the only thing that turns on the boiler is actually this part highlighted in red. It's simply the valve itself in the switch inside, and that goes basically directly to the switch line on the boiler. This does unfortunately mean that if the valve fails or jams open, that the system will run continuously, even though the thermostat and programmer are turned off. And so if you actually find it on the system, then it's usually the valve that's at fault. Now the only other part of this sequence is the pump, and that's controlled directly from the boiler. And of course the uh, boiler being on will activate the pump as well. And as I said before, it's generally the case that uh, even though the boiler is turned off, the pump will continue on for several minutes to remove any excess heat contained inside there. So it's fairly common that you'll find the pump is still running even though the rest of the system is turned off. Let's say generally it's only for a few minutes, certainly it shouldn't be running for hours or continuously. Now I'll just go through that again, but this time we'll just take away the neutral and earth wires, because they don't actually have any part in the controls. The only thing to make sure is that they are in fact connected to the appropriate terminal. So here's the same diagram without the neutral and earth wires included. And this is in the off state, and the brown wires here are ones which are permanently powered. So of course power from the 3 amp fuse spur, and that goes to terminal 1. And then we've got uh, wires from there going to the boiler, the uh, valve, or the switch inside the valve, and of course to the programmer. And if the system's off, then those are the only things which will actually receive power. All of the other grey wires will not have any power on them. So the first part of the sequence is that the programmer will switch on, and you'll have power coming out on terminal 3, and that goes via the wiring centre to the cylinder thermostat. And those are highlighted in red there. And this represents the situation where, although the program is turned on, the hot water is actually already heated up, so we don't actually need to heat it up any further. However, if hot water is cooled, or someone has used some, then the cylinder thermostat will switch over, and that will send out the power via the terminal 1 there, through to the wiring centre, and then into the hot water valve. And this will activate the motor inside the valve, and of course cause the valve to be opened. And again, that's highlighted in red there for the actual circuit that's being powered. Now once the valve has fully opened, the switch inside the valve will close, and that will connect uh, line onto the outgoing wire at the right-hand side there, going to terminal 10, and that again goes to the boiler. This will cause the boiler to switch on, and the boiler itself will then activate the pump as well via that PL terminal at the bottom. And the bit that's being highlighted in red now is the only part which actually determines whether the boiler's on or not. So it's purely that switch inside the valve which determines whether it's on or not. So if that switch goes faulty, then uh, of course the thing's either not going to work, or you'll find the boiler and pumper on continuously, even though you've turned off the programmer and the thermostat. So that was the hot water side of operation. So now let's have a look at the heating side, which is uh, extremely similar. And again, this is the diagram with just the uh, boiler pump uh, power coming in and the programmer. So of course the first things we need to add is some kind of thermostat. Uh, in this case, of course, it's going to be a room thermostat, which senses the temperature of the air. And this particular example has three terminals, one of which is a neutral, and that's purely for the internal sort of accelerator heater, or in some cases the electronics, if it happens to be an electronic version. But as with the hot water cylinder, it's purely a two-contact switch, so the switch is open, 
if heat isn't required and if the room cools down and heat is needed then the switch will close. Of course we also need a valve for the heating system and this is exactly the same type of valve as used for the hot water. The only difference is of course it's uh, plumbed into the pipes that go to the radiators not the hot water cylinder but the actual valve itself is exactly the same and you've got those three line neutral and earth connections coming in at the left side an additional wire in brown there for the motor and the orange wire coming out is what turns on when the valve has fully opened and that's via that small switch inside the valve. So if heating is actually required then this is the sequence of events. Inside the programmer the uh, terminal 4 will come live as the timer switches that on and that goes to terminal 4 in the wiring centre and of course because that's also connected to the room thermostat the wire going to the terminal L also becomes live. Now in this state the thermostat is open so uh, no actual heat is needed but as the room cools the uh, thermostat will close that will send the line signal via the SL terminal back to the wiring centre onto terminal 5 and that goes again to the valve which will cause the motor in the valve to operate and open the valve. And again that circuit is highlighted in red here so it's from the programmer via the wiring centre to the room thermostat back from the thermostat and of course through the wiring centre to the heating valve. And just as with the hot water once the room heats up to the desired temperature the room thermostat will open and break the circuit and also if the programmer turns off of course then no power gets to the valve and again the system will switch off. Now once the valve has opened fully the switch inside the valve will close and this will send the signal from the permanent live coming into the valve out on the orange wire which just as with the hot water system goes to terminal 10 and that goes to the boiler and of course then the boiler will switch on. And again just as with the hot water the only part that actually controls the boiler is the switch in the valve and the wiring from there and that's highlighted in red on this diagram. The only remaining part then is the pump and that's again controlled directly from the boiler itself so the fact that the boiler has been turned on means that the pump will also switch on and of course circulate the water through the system. Now just as with the hot water one let's have a look at that again without the neutral and earth wires. So what we have here is the basic items there and the brown wires here are permanently connected to line so we've got the terminal 1 inside the wiring centre which is powered from the 3 amp fuse spur and we also have wires going to the boiler, the switch inside the valve and the programmer so those things are powered all the time and the grey wires shown here are not powered as the system is in the off state. So when the programmer switches on terminal 4 and that becomes connected to line and that goes via terminal 4 in the wiring centre to the room thermostat and that part again is highlighted in red. And this represents a situation where the room is already to a suitable temperature so the system does not operate. So when the room cools or someone tampers with the thermostat dial then the thermostat switch closes and that sends the line out via the SL terminal to the wiring centre on terminal 5 and again that goes through to the motor inside the heating valve and again the highlighted parts in red are what's currently powered at this point. Now once the valve has fully opened the switch inside the valve will close and that will connect the outgoing wire which goes to terminal 10 to the incoming line and that goes through to the boiler and of course that means the boiler will switch on and of course the boiler then in turn switches on the pump to circulate the water through the system. And just as with the hot water system the red highlighted parts here are the only thing that really controls the boiler it's purely held down to that switch inside the valve. Now that's the two uh, heating and hot water parts so let's just have a look at how those all fit together. This diagram shows the hot water setup so you've got the uh, cylinder thermostat there and the hot water valve and that's the same diagram as was shown earlier. So all we need to do here now is simply add in the heating side. So we need the room thermostat which goes in there and of course the heating valve which goes in up there. Now it's important to note here that the heating and hot water valves are in fact totally separate as are the uh, cylinder thermostat and the room thermostat so it's quite possible on these systems for the heating to work perfectly and the hot water to have some fault or the hot water to work perfectly and the heating to have some fault the two are things are not actually interconnected in any way so a single fault will generally affect only one of those two systems. The outgoing wires from the two valves which are shown in orange here both go to terminal 10 and this means that if the heating is on or the hot water is on or in fact both of them are on that terminal 10 receives power and of course that was what turns on the boiler and the pump. But that's the only interconnection between the systems as you can see they both go back to separate switches within the valves so again there's no interaction really between the heating and hot water 
other than the fact that both the outputs go to the same terminal. So if the hot water is required, the items in red here will be powered, so that's from the programmer, via the wiring centre to the cylinder thermostat and to the hot water valve. And the situation for central heating is pretty much the same, it's simply terminal 4 in the programmer this time, again via the wiring centre and the room thermostat, and that goes to the heating valve. And of course it's quite possible that both things are required, so in that case uh, all of those things are powered, and both the heating and hot water valves will have power to them, causing them both to open. And if either the hot water or heating valve, or in fact both are open, then the switch or switches will open inside, and that connects the line to terminal 10, goes to the boiler and turns the boiler on, which then of course will turn on the pump as well. Now there are a couple of variations on how the pump is connected. Uh, what's shown here has been uh, what we've seen in the other diagrams, which is by far the most modern and common option. And the boiler therefore has a permanent supply on the L, N and E terminals. The incoming switch line goes to the SL terminal, and that's what turns the boiler on. And then the pump is connected to that fifth terminal there. This is so the boiler can then leave the pump running for a few minutes after the actual boiler has turned off, and that gets rid of any excess heat inside. Most modern boilers have this kind of arrangement. Now some older boilers don't have a separate connection for the pump, and in that case it's simply a question of the pump connecting to the same SL terminal in the boiler as the incoming actual signal. So in this case the pump and the boiler turn on simultaneously, and of course turn off simultaneously as well. And the line coming in permanently at the bottom there is purely for any kind of electronic display or controls within the boiler itself. The third option, which is uh, usually found on much older boilers, is where the boiler only has three terminals, so it's line, neutral and earth, and in this case there's no permanent supply to the boiler. It's simply the case that when power is applied to the SL terminal the boiler turns on, and when power is removed then the boiler turns off. And as with the previous example, the pump wires again to the same terminals as the boiler, so both of those things turn on at the same time, and of course when power is removed they both switch off. Most modern boilers are not arranged like this, and they typically only find this on older systems. So that's a look at S-plan wiring, and although it may look fairly complicated in the entire diagram, if you just look at each part individually, it's actually fairly straightforward. It's simply a question of the line being switched to the various different parts, and of course uh, through the thermostats things as required. And the main fault on these type of systems is where the valves fail in some way, Either the switch inside can get stuck in a closed position, or the valve may actually jam open, and if that happens the system will actually run continuously, even if the programmer and the thermostats are switched off, and if that does actually happen you can in fact remove the programmer completely, and then the uh, boiler and pump will still be running. And the easy way to find it which is at fault is just to check the temperature of the pipes that come out of the two valves. The one that's got hot water coming out of it is basically the one that's going to be jammed open. Most other common faults are the thermostats, so if you find that the uh, temperature of the rooms is increasing excessively and uh, adjusting the thermostat doesn't appear to do anything, then it's likely that the thermostat has failed. And of course the same applies to the hot water, so if there's boiling water coming out of taps, then it's likely the thermostat either needs adjusting or it's actually jammed in the on position. But if it's the thermostat only, switching off at the programmer will actually switch off the whole system as you would expect. So in that case it's just the thermostats which have gone wrong. If the pump fails, then generally the boiler will show some kind of error because it will overheat, and if the boiler itself fails then normally that's shown on the front panel as some sort of error code. And if you find that there's no power at all, the first thing to check is the fuse in the 3 amp fuse spur. Obviously if that's blown then that's the cause of no power. However, just shoving a fuse in there is not normally a good idea because if a fuse has failed there's generally a good reason for this, and it's typically that some component has caused a fault. And the number one items for that are the boiler and the pump, because of course they contain water, and if water leaks out then it's fairly likely to blow a fuse or cause various bits of damage. Now these diagrams can be found at flameport.com, there's a link in the description to this video, and until next time, thanks for watching.